And the first thing we want to start with is an extrude. Now by default, extrude is going to be on the create menu all the way at the top. But if you've modified these at all, you want to make sure that you go down to extrude or you hit E on the keyboard. Again, remember that we have that S key and by default in the model toolbox, extrude and fillet have been placed in there. We also have the marking menu, but it has press pull, which in this case does the exact same thing as extrude, but extrude is not on that menu by default. So again, we're going to do an extrude and we're going to select the areas that we want. So we're going to start because we have so many sketch entities, we're going to start by selecting a few different areas. And what we're going to do is we're going to fill in this, uh, this model here. Now I am going to select this rounded section here. And the reason I'm going to do that is because we're going to be extruding that as its own part. And we want to make sure that we don't have to worry about the draft and we don't have to worry about the overlap. So even though we have so many sketch entities and profiles in that original sketch, we can still come in and we can manually select these areas. It might take a little bit of time, but it makes the sketching a lot easier because we can reuse that sketch and anything that we need to update or change can be located in one place. So we're going to rotate this around and we're going to do two and a half millimeters. Now the two and a half millimeters is in one direction. We're going to mirror this thing down the road and we can, we're going to add draft to it. You can also, let's go right click and edit that feature. You can add draft here at this time. And we'll, we'll go ahead and we'll explore this process because um, it is important. We'll look at it from the front view and zoom in. And notice that we don't see any draft here. If we rotate this around, it's actually drafting the other direction. Uh, so what we need to make sure that we do, and you need to be very clear on this. And sometimes what it means is we have to put an extreme draft angle to make sure we understand it. But if we do minus one, it drafts the direction that we're, we're looking at. So let's look at this for a second because this is our first extrude. I'm going to fit it to screen. It has one degree draft on it. And this is going to be the basis of our fan. Now when we look at this and we zoom in a little bit, the holes have a little bit of draft on them. The corners have a little bit of draft. One degree is going to be enough for what we do. We can actually go down probably to half a degree on, on this part. But we're going to assume that one degree is, is the draft that we need. So everything has that draft in the front view that we're looking at. The front view, we're going to fit to screen. The view that we're looking at, this is our pull direction. So we're focusing on the part from this view. We're assuming that we're the top of the mold. And what that means is that the bottom of the mold can just be a flat plate. There's nothing here that needs to be very complicated about it. Now, remember, we are going to model half of this and mirror it and make some changes and so on. But the pull direction is essentially pulling toward the front view. So in this case, it's pulling toward us. So all of our draft, we need to, when we look at this part, we need to be able to see those walls. We don't want any what's called an overhang or an occlusion, an area where we can't get to. Um, because we are going to mirror this thing, we want to make sure that we sort of follow that rule, follow along that. Using the front plane, the XY plane, as our parting line. So anything that's toward us, toward the front view, is going to have draft on it, in this case negative draft, so we can pull from this direction. Anything on the other side of it, toward the back, is going to have positive draft as we're looking at it. So again, the parting line is going to be the middle of our part, and it's going to allow us to pull both directions and have draft in both directions from the XY plane, from that scene. Next, we're going to expand our sketches. We're going to show this sketch, sketch one, and we're going to extrude again. Now this time, the selection is a little bit different because it's trying to select the part. And what you can do is you can rotate this around, you can select from the backside, or while you have this open, you can simply hide that body. Now it is semi-preferable to hide the body because by default, it's going to want to add that part. It's going to want to join them together. If you're making multiple bodies in a file, if this needs to be its own body, then hiding the original will make it a little bit easier because it won't try to auto join them together. Now we actually want these two to be joined together. So before I okay this, I'll show it again, um, but it does make the selection process a little bit easier. Now, one thing you need to be aware of inside of Fusion is anytime you hit the enter key, even if it's in a numerical dialog box like this, 
it will okay the operation. You know, it, it tends to get a little frustrating when you're a new user. You get used to it, but I, even I still do it from time to time. Uh, so keep in mind that anytime you hit enter, you're gonna be okaying this operation. You might have to come back in and edit it. We're gonna be extruding this 11 millimeters. We're gonna add minus one degree of draft. And before we okay this, we're gonna show that body and notice that it switches to def by default to cut. We wanna join it. We wanna join these two together. And we're gonna say, okay. Now I'm gonna hide the sketch and we're gonna take a look at this. So what we've done is we've created an extrude. And again, it was important that we had that overlap uh, that we, we took that original extrude all the way out to this inside edge. And we still, again, go to the front view. We still have draft. We look at this, we can see the inside wall right there. We can select it. We can see the outside wall, we can select it. And that's how we know that we have draft. There is a way to inspect this and look at draft analysis. We can, in this case, select this body, the direction, we're gonna select the XY plane. And if we drop this down, drop these numbers down, this is our draft. We wanna make sure that we're at or below one degree because that's the draft we have on the wall. And it'll show you the colored faces that have the draft. So in this case, yellow is gonna indicate that we have enough draft. If we take this up, you see that red means that we need, we're required to add draft. The green faces or the teal faces, these are flat, these are normal or you know in the same plane as our pull direction. They don't need any draft, it's just a, sort of a different color indicator. If we flip this over, you can see the bottom's the same as well. I'm gonna cancel this, I don't wanna save it yet, uh, but if you do save it, it will still show up in an analysis folder and you can turn it on and off whenever you need to.